Oh, there we go. I think we're just going live now. Excellent. Uh, so good morning, everybody. And thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, we're having a live webinar session, which is going to cover medical genetics and genomics and clinical genetics. Uh, so if you're watching live, then thank you for joining us. And if you're watching on demand, then thank you for joining us later on. Um, just before we get started, if you have any questions at all during the session, we're here for you for the next half hour. So please just use the Q&A button at the bottom uh, and you can pop in any questions or comments there and we will do our best to answer them in session. If you submitted questions after your registration or part, as part of registering for this session, then I'll have them all here and we'll go through them. Um, and if anything comes up as well that you're not sure um, about, but you would maybe rather speak to someone uh, one of us over email about it, then I'm just going to pop some information in the chat box. Um, let's see. That's it there. So we've got the email addresses, both of which come to Ilsa. So she'll introduce herself in a second. Um, and I think we've also got the Facebook group shared there as well. So there is already a Facebook group on the Go group, which you can join. Um, I think that's all of the sort of let's get started admin part done. So my name's Sarah, I work at the grad school and I'm just here to host uh, today. And we've also got Dr. Maria Jackson and Ilsa Watson with us. So I'm going to let them do some little introductions as well. So Maria, if you wouldn't mind kicking us okay. off the intro. Um, hello everyone. So I'm Maria Jackson. I think some of you uh, might have had uh, email contact with you before or some of you have even been on the Facebook already. But if not, um, hello. Um, so I'm the program director for both medical genetics and genomics and clinical genetics. Um, I'll just actually say a wee bit about those. Um, the courses are very similar, but um, medical genetics and genomics does laboratory based work for part of the time during which clinical genetics does um, courses which are more related to talking to patients. So the bottom line is um, clinical genetics is really designed for people who are doctors or nurses and envisage a career, obviously, uh, interacting with patients. Whereas medical genetics and genomics is designed for people who want to work in laboratories, so uh, research laboratories, or genetic diagnostic laboratories. So um, apart from that, the courses are very, very similar. They share a lot of teaching and the classes are together for much of the time. So, you know, your, your colleagues from clinical genetics and medical genetics and genomics all, all uh, treated the same. Um, so I think that sometimes causes a bit of confusion. Um, to be honest, it, it doesn't matter if you're, say, a, a, a doctor or a nurse and you haven't quite made up your mind, um, it is possible to make up your mind later. Um, so, so that's um, clinical genetics. Now, a lot of questions, and I can completely understand this, were about the teaching because of all this COVID stuff. Um, I will say that obviously we cannot make any um, promises. I can only tell you what we're planning currently which I'm hoping will go ahead. So a lot of the teaching is going to be online by Zoom. So kind of similar to what we've got here, except this is a webinar. And for class Zooms, you will be able to see your classmates in the Zooms as well. And we'll use things called breakout rooms where we can put you into small groups within the Zoom to chat about things and discuss problem, uh, genetics problems and things like that. So um, we'll be delivering some teaching by Zoom, particularly lectures. Before Christmas, we do have some laboratory based work for the medical genetics cohort, but it will be online using virtual labs. Our actual um, what we'd call wet labs, where you actually get down and dirty in the lab, uh, are planned for after Christmas. So we have, I think, booked 
Um, Elsa can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty <laughs> sure we booked yeah. um, a socially distanced laboratory space where you'll be two meters apart from anybody else, unless they change the regulations and make it less. Subject, subject um, lines all the <laughs> <laughs> so, so yes, we we have we are planning labs, but not till after Christmas. We usually run them earlier in the program, but we're delaying them a wee bit. So uh, the lab should take place as normal, unless the government decides to, to change things again. Um, I'm currently just discussing with the NHS, the National Health Service scientists, um, about their contribution to the teaching. So they're keen to get involved again uh, this year. They, they're, they're involved every year. Um, again, for them, working in the NHS, things have changed considerably but they still want to be involved in the teaching so that's very good so you can expect to to see uh some of them on our zoom <laughs> um and be able to ask some questions and, and interact with them um now we've got the facebook which i think uh sarah has already mentioned and that's on the chat. You should be able to see the link to the Facebook. If you're not on that already, please take a note of that Facebook and join. And it means you can meet your classmates. You can see that the staff have all recorded videos about who they are. So not only me, but um, all the other key staff members have put up information about themselves so that you can get to know, know us a bit. Um, now the final point, I'll just address one of the questions that was asked, or maybe a couple of questions asked about this, selecting courses. Now, with our medical genetics and clinical genetics programs, these are um, set specified um, courses. So once you're on the program, automatically you're, you're enrolled for particular courses. There is, um, one point in the year for the medical genetics course for which they would choose between a course called clinical genomics and um, precision oncology and omics for the biomedical sciences or something along those lines. So there will be a, a choice of three courses for the medical genetics students. And you basically do not make that choice until we're well into the teaching. So it gives you a chance to really think about which of the courses you want to do. So we call it a more informed choice. You're not just plumping for a course out of a sort of panic that you won't get in. So don't worry about that. Elsa is gonna to talk to you about the um, registration and course enrollment issues. Um, basically the bottom line is don't worry about it, just get registered and, and we'll sort you out later. But Elsa's going to talk to you about that. So I think I will pass over to, oh, actually I'll say one other thing. I can see posted in the chat that the last enrollment deadline is November the 23rd. Um, don't take that as a kind of, oh, so I don't need to actually turn up to classes until November the 23rd. Um, if you don't, get stuck into the course and start attending the sessions early on, believe me, despite any um, resolutions you make or whatever motivation and commitment you've got, students who aren't there at the start don't do so well. So um, the classes will be online, so it should be easy enough to, to join and attend as long as you've got good internet. So make sure you're there from the start, from wherever you are in the world, you can be there online these days. So that's actually a positive aspect of COVID is that it won't actually matter that you're not in the UK for the first couple of weeks or even the first couple of months because everything will be available online. Okay, I think I've answered the, the questions that would do with the academic stuff. If I've missed something out, just add a question into the chat and if I don't spot it, Sarah will spot it because she's keeping an eye on what we're doing. <laughs> and I'll pass you on to Ailsa, who's going to tell you a bit more about the, the nitty gritty of, of the um, registration and stuff. 
Okay, thank you. Hi everyone. Uh, thanks, Maria. Um, my name is Elsa Watson. I think quite a few of you have probably have had some emails from me uh, before. I am the I work at the MBLS Graduate School and I'm the administrator for both of the genetics programs. Um, I'm basically here for all the non-academic stuff that you will encounter at the university, from registration and enrolling in classes on um, any access issues you might have, any any basically anything that isn't teaching. Um, if you need an answer, you email me, and if I don't know the answer, I know someone who does. This is I, I will have had contact with you now from the time when you were considering applying. Um, I'll have answered some of your questions in the mailbox. Um, as Maria said, uh, registration um, is the most important thing. Um, we need to know that you're that you're coming to the university. I know some of you are still offer holders who are just thinking about whether to take up your place. Um, when you have accepted an offer, um, you will go on. I think Sarah has put some details about registration available. I will pop this into the um, into the chat just now, what we need you to do when you've accepted your offer is to register as a student. This fundamentally means you are now, you will be a student of Glasgow University and we know who you are. Um, that will all then trigger a bunch of emails from the university telling you to enrol in all your classes. As Maria has said, and we've made clear, um, we will have been emailing people, have put messages on the Facebook group. Please don't worry about enrolling on all of your classes just now. We can sort that out for you. The main thing is that we know you're coming. If we know you're coming, we know who you are. We know where you should be and we'll make sure you're there. Please, please don't worry if you, some classes may have said we haven't opened them up to enrollment. If that may be because there are options which aren't available yet. It may be that there are classes that we would want to put you into groups and we'll sort that out for you when we know how many of you there are. The main thing is please don't worry, just get yourself registered, get yourself as a student and we'll we'll take care of it all for you from there. It's what we're here for. Um, I think that's it. And if there's anything else that anyone has any questions about, just ask. We're here for I, we're here for all the all the facets of life as a student at the University of Glasgow. And just because you're not physically in Glasgow, it doesn't mean you're not a student of the University of Glasgow. If you need advice about about anything at all, just drop me an email and we're happy to help. The email addresses Sarah has put in the chat. Perfect, thank you. Um, so we have had one question come in the Q&A. Um, and I would say if you're sitting there thinking you might have a question, just get it in because we're here for the next 15 minutes for you and to answer anything that you've got on your mind. So don't hesitate to drop it in the Q&A box. Um, we have had a question which is about deferral if you don't think that online learning is going to work for you. Um, I think before I pass that over, I would say I think everyone's doing their best to move move things online and move things to on to blended learning in response to obviously the pandemic. And right now things are I don't feel like we have we necessarily have an endpoint in mind. There's no guarantee that things will be the same, better, worse this time next year. And I do feel that it's obviously a personal decision, but whether, I, I don't know if I would consider, I, I think what I'm trying to say is online learning might be here to stay <laughs> for some for some courses, not, not in their entirety. Obviously we're still gonna work at getting everyone into labs, socially distanced or normal, depending on what happens. But to some degree, I think a lot of things will be moving online this year and for the foreseeable. If they are, if people are able to de deliver it appropriately and to the same standard online as it was previously done in person, um, so it's just something to bear in mind before if you are looking at maybe deferring purely on the basis of online learning. But I'm going to pass this over because I feel like I'm not saying the right things. <laughs> um, yeah, anyway. I, can I just say? I mean, I think sometimes when students think about online learning, they're thinking about um, a situation where there are lots of lectures and they're posted online and you, you click on the lecture and then you, you're watching the screen and somebody is droning on at you for an hour and then that's the end of the lecture and then you can maybe go to another lecture and somebody drones on at you for another hour. Um, this is not what we are meaning when we're talking about online learning. We will be deliver was well, actually some some material even even for the past uh, two or three years what we have done 
some of the time, and I know I've done this in, in um, virtually all my lectures, is get students to, to watch a very short, say five or 10 minute video before I give the lecture. And then I can ask some questions about that material during the lecture. But we envisage um, our teaching sessions are going to be live online, okay? So there will be a lecturer, um, the other side of your computer, the rest of the class will be there as well. You'll be able to chat, you'll be able to ask questions during the sessions there will have breakout activities i think i mentioned this before where we can break the class of say i don't know 30 students into groups of five who could chat to each other um online but in, in a smaller chat group so um it's not a kind of it's dead just you sitting in your room and there's a computer and there's stuff on your computer and there's no social interaction we do envisage the teaching with interaction with staff, interaction with other students. Um, so hopefully it will be um, an equivalent experience to, to what we normally have. Um, there will be some social aspects that you'll miss out on. Actually, you'll miss out on having to get out of bed in the morning, um, get dressed, uh, find your way to um, wherever the lecture's being delivered, you know, getting on a bus or a train or, or whatever. So you'll actually miss out on the commute, which I think is a positive thing. I can deliver a lecture and sort of get out of bed, uh, have some breakfast, sit down at the computer and woof, I'm ready to go. Um, so I, I think it's quite nice not having to, to drive myself in <laughs> every morning, <laughs> getting up at the crack of dawn to avoid the, the traffic. Um, so, we, we do intend, as I say, to deliver um, wet laboratories after Christmas and they will be appropriately socially distanced and no doubt you'll all be wearing masks. Um, I'm sure we'll sort that out nearer the time. Um, we will also hope to deliver some some face to face uh, small group um, teaching uh, over the past um, two or three months. We've actually when we've been supervising students doing their, their project work, we've been having sort of one-to-one -one meetings online with the students. And I think that's gone really, really well. But don't take my word for it. If you join the Facebook, there are actually, I think about four of our previous class are also on the new class Facebook. So you can actually, um, they've, they've identified themselves on the Facebook. So I guess once you're on the Facebook, you can message them and say, is this really true? Are they actually really all horrible people or are they as nice as they say? So you can talk to some of our current students who can maybe also answer other questions that you've had that you don't want to ask us about. <laughs> um, you can ask a, a real student who's been kind of in the, a similar situation to you. And I think the students felt that you know, okay, you weren't maybe having the same degree of social interactions, but I think they felt that the the quality of the, the actual teaching was, was still very, very high. Um, Thank you, Maria. You've definitely put that much more eloquently than I was. That's, that's kind of what I was trying to say. I would, I can see Ilsa's waving, so I was going to pass to you quickly, Ilsa, anyway, because obviously if someone does feel that deferral is still the best option, is there a deadline for that? Is that what you were waving for? That is. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, no, that's fine. I kind of sidetracked that, but let's no, not also at all. address I, I that. There may not be for academic reasons. There may be other reasons yeah. why yeah. Like, you know, perhaps just feels, you know, they haven't got the infrastructure or whatever to support online learning at the moment. And yeah. The deadline for deferrals has now passed, I'm afraid. Um, but what you can do is we'll be reopening applications in the next couple of weeks for next year. Um, feel free to apply and please drop me an email and tell me that you'd already been accepted. We'll try and marry that up and we'll take a, a favourable look at a new application for you. Um, we, we've had to just defend deferral at the moment just purely because the new, new academic season is, is starting up. I'll just pop a link into the chat for you just now. Um, just give a few seconds. Yeah, so if you've already, if you have a place this year, there, there is no reason you would not be accepted again next year. Uh, the only possible reason I can see is that if you have an IELTS, an English language exam, that is more than uh, a certain number of years old, 
it might be too old by next year. So you might have to take your English exam again. Um, if you did reapply and you got a refusal for some uh, strange reason, it might be, we've actually had a change of um, uh, personnel dealing with the, our um, applications. So um, possibly, I can't see why it would be any different, but if you do get a rejection, then just email Elsa and say, some, some idiot has written, no, don't say that. So somebody has now oh. rejected me, <laughs> but I had an offer before. Can you please help? And Elsa will, will get it all sorted out. I will, I will liaise with, um, with the admissions department on your behalf. We understand that things, surreal circumstances are changing. Some people may not be in a position to take up uh, a place that this year. Uh, please don't worry about it. Reapply for next year. We'll look at it as favourably as we can. That's great. Thank you. I've just drop the Facebook group link in again, but with an appropriate oh, yeah. label so that you can see which one it actually is. Cause I think before I'd literally just dropped <laughs> the link by itself, which might not be super obvious what it is. Uh, we've had another question. Should we then enroll in the classes that we can enroll in or should we leave enrollment for now? Elsa? Um, yeah, absolutely feel free. If there's classes open for enrollment, feel free to enroll in them. Um, but please don't worry about the ones you can't enrol in. Sorry, I should have made that more clear. Um, don't worry if there's classes you can't enrol in, I will enrol you in them or let you know when you can enrol yourself. Um, but yeah, by all means, if you can enrol in a class, do it. If you find that anything's clashing, just drop me an email and I'll, I'll resolve it for you. And it shouldn't be now. I think, I think touch with all the classes have now been resolved. Um, but that is just a background thing. Um, please, please do not worry about enrolment. If you have any problems with it, it will be addressed for you. Perfect, thank you. Um, and we've had another question. Will the lectures be recorded? Yes, lectures are recorded. Um, when you do the, the breakout activities, they're not recorded because obviously it would inhibit some students from actually talking and participating if they thought they were being recorded. Um, so lectures are recorded. Tutorials, um, again, because we want students to interact and, and participate, they tend not to be recorded. So um, it's going to be a mixture of things that are recorded and things that are not recorded. But lectures, um, touch wood, <laughs> should all be recorded. That obviously is dependent upon um, the, the technological what's its um, all working. I don't know the technical language for all that, but as long as as long as it all works in principle, everything, the lectures should be recorded. Yeah. And yeah. yeah and they will be made, they will be made available on on the teaching environments for you. And we understand because of time zones and things, for the first semester, not everyone's going to be able to attend it at the live lecture time. But it will be available offline for you to catch up when you wake up. Yeah. Perfect. So Although, um, we will try and schedule. Can, can I just add, that obviously, if you don't attend the lecture live, then any um, breakout activities you would miss because they're not going to be recorded. So we'll only record the bits of teaching sessions where it's the lecturer speaking. So any interactive bits are obviously not going to be recorded. So uh, you would need to be very careful because you, you, you will miss out by not being at the actual sessions. And that's missing out if you're not there live, rather like before Christmas anyway, if you're not there for yeah, the yeah. Um, on, online live, um, which kind yeah. of leads into the next question we've just had. Uh, is it okay not to be in Glasgow before Christmas? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of students are um, not going to be able to make it to Glasgow before Christmas. Um, we, if, if we did have, I mean, I think at one point we were hoping to have some tutorials face to face, um, what we would do for anything now that we did have a face to face session, we would have an equivalent online for, for people who, who weren't in Glasgow. So we would make sure before Christmas that everyone gets the same experience whether they're in Glasgow or not, if that answers the question. So if you can't make it to Glasgow, and I know some people um, can't travel just now for whatever reason, um, it's, it's not an issue, but you should be 
in Glasgow for the 11th of January. Um, and very soon after that, like might be the day after that, we'll be starting wet labs. So if you're not there, you, you could miss out. I might be wrong in that, but I, I'm pretty sure we're starting planning to start wet labs pretty soon after Christmas. Yeah, I think, is it the case with these, I know with some of the other programs that the latest arrival deadline also include like factors in your isolation time if you have to isolate after traveling no. else is looking like no <laughs> no okay the, the 11th of january is if that's the date that would expect it is a for an isolation period um you would need to build that in but the cast your cast forms of your international students um will give your latest date of arrival in the uk for tier four reasons um as right, the okay. january um that's when teaching starts but if there's on-campus teaching, you need to take that into account when planning your arrival date. But again, if, if that's going to be an issue for you, can you let us know as soon as? Yeah, yeah I, think, I think Sarah's actually raised a very important point, which is that um, you might be, if you're not in Glasgow yet, you might be having to quarantine for, for two, two weeks on arrival. So if there were, you, you would miss out on face-to-face -face teaching then. So if you arrived on the 10th of January, and then had to isolate for two weeks, you would be missing out on any any face-to-face -face teaching in that period, which could include laboratory work. So um, yeah, factor that in to um, your arrival in, in the UK. I'm looking at if, I think maybe this is gonna be on a bit of a case-by-case -case basis, in which case definitely do get in touch um, with Ilsa, sorry Ilsa. So I'm, it, but I'm, <laughs> I'm sure she can advise looking I've got a calendar open now so two weeks before the 11th would be the 28th of December um, but I mean I, I, as long as it's in line with whatever the guidance is from the government which keeps changing who knows what um, that's going to be yes <laughs> yeah and just get in touch with us if you've got any queries um, and we should at least be able to factor in whatever's been whatever the guidance currently is and advise you accordingly. Um, I think this might be, well, we've got, I'd say we've got about three minutes left because I know we started a little bit late. So if you've got any more questions, get them in. Uh, we've got one here. Is the draft timetable posted on Facebook for teaching until Christmas likely to alter much or will that stand? Okay. Um, I think it will still continue in a similar way that um, Monday's sort of lectures in the morning and then uh, PBL group in the afternoon, Tuesdays tend to be lab based, Wednesdays lectures in the morning and some labs in the afternoon. Although I think um, we're planning currently because of the social distancing thing in labs, uh, if we have a, a, a significant size class, we might have to split the class into three. So some people might have their labs on Tuesday morning, some on Tuesday afternoon, some on Wednesday afternoon. There is one week in which we've had to swap the labs to Thursday and Friday. Uh, but in general, Fridays are optional tutorials in the morning only. Um, Thursday, going back a day, uh, tends to be lectures um, in the morning and sometimes going on into early afternoon. So that pattern is expected to continue. We generally avoid um, formal teaching on Fridays. So Fridays tend to be just the optional tutorials, which are a chance for students to um, tell us what they want us to do, like whether it's reviewing um, something that came up in a lecture or a tutorial or um, going through some problems in preparation for exams. It's, it's more student directed in the optional tutorials. Um, so the pattern will be similar. Um, as I say, I'm still trying to, to um, just liaise a bit with the NHS to confirm how we'll sort out their, their bit of the, the contributions to the teaching. So I don't want to post something and then we have to um, switch it all around, but it, it should be a, a very similar pattern to the end of, um, or the, the, the middle of the teaching before Christmas. Okay, perfect. Um, well, I think that's us just coming up to the end of the time for our session. Um, so if you have any more questions, then you can get in touch by email or you can maybe if it's if it's something that 
is appropriate to do so, maybe you can use the Facebook group as well. I think that sounds like a really good resource and a way to get to know other people on the programme. Um, so yeah, I think we'll, we'll, we'll tidy things up there and we'll end it there. But if you've got anything else you wanted to add, uh, Maria or Elsa, before we finish up for now? No, I can't think of anything else. So just email us, email Elsa or myself if you if you have a question that you, you didn't get a chance to ask in Perfect. the session, or, or ask it on the Facebook page. Even join the Facebook and ask a question there. And and uh, yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of people have the same kind of questions. So you can see a lot of the questions are answered on Facebook already. And if you ask a question there, everyone else can see the, the answers to to your questions, which I'm sure they'll all share. I would, I would just um, say do keep a look at the University of Glasgow uh, Facebook page uh, website sorry as well um, on the website there's a lot of information um, a lot of teaching most teaching has been moved on, online this year um, you're very far from the only group of students who are in this situation um, you will find um, guidelines tips from working from home tips about online uh, and supports that the university can provide for you so just because you're physically not in Glasgow doesn't mean you're not a student now at the University of Glasgow please take advantage of all the resources we have for you and if you're not sure what they are ask them to that. yeah definitely okay well thank you so much Maria and Elsa for joining us today and thank you to all of our participants for watching. Um, we are recording this session, so we'll make it available to you via email and maybe even on the Facebook page as well. If it sounds like you've got videos, I'll send it to yeah. you guys Do once it's all up and ready. Um, yeah, and uh, we look forward to welcoming you, whether online or eventually in person soon. Um, but we'll just say goodbye for now and thanks again. All right, thanks. Bye everyone. Bye.